Manta rays are one of the gentle giants of the oceans. With their enormous wingspans and graceful movements, they look as though they're flying through the water. Mantas have predators in their natural habitat, but their most significant threat by far is from humans. They face being caught as bycatch in fishing nets, and their gill plates are prized for use in traditional Asian medicine, an industry estimated to be worth around $30 million a year. One of the largest manta ray fisheries in the world used to be in Indonesia. That was until 2014, when the government decided to turn the tide and create the world's largest marine sanctuary for manta rays. Indonesian waters attract both types of the manta ray species, the giant or oceanic manta and the reef manta. Like their close relatives, sharks, mantas are fish, but they use their gills to breathe and must keep moving or they'll drown. And despite their huge size, they feed on some of the smallest organisms in the ocean, zooplankton. For marine biologists, the waters of Indonesia present an incredible opportunity to learn more about this vulnerable species. I caught up with Sarah Lewis of Manta Trust to find out more. Here in Indonesia, there was nothing known about Indonesia's manta ray populations. So we didn't know anything about how big their populations are, um, how distributed they are throughout the country. And in order to really uh, manage populations and conserve them, we really need to know that important data. So we wanted to come in and try and work with the Indonesian scientists and NGOs and fill in those gaps. But the Manta Trust mission is not just to research manta rays. The nonprofit also strives to protect them. For Sarah and her team in Indonesia, the government's ruling has made this part of their job much easier. What makes this such a landmark decision? Has anyone else ever done this? Are there other precedents to follow here? Well, there are a couple of other countries that have protected manta rays, but it's just so significant for Indonesia because it is a developing country, because it is, or it was, a very big uh, manta fishery here in Indonesia. So for the Indonesian government to make that step was quite a big deal for them. Um, and we really praise the government for taking that leap. And it wasn't just the ruling. You've really seen it come into effect since then, haven't you? They really have been taking steps to make it happen. Yes, and that's the key. So it's great that the law was put in place, that manta rays on paper are protected. But if that isn't followed through, then that law means nothing. Anyone found hunting or trading manta rays in this protected area now faces fines of up to 25,000 US dollars. A little over one year since the ruling went into effect, multiple manta ray traffickers have been caught, fined, and even jailed. Manta Trust is now working with former manta ray fishing villages in hopes of helping them develop new, sustainable livelihoods. If we really want to achieve these conservation goals, we have to work with the people and these fishing communities who have traditionally been hunting mantas for many years. They are often very poor, live in remote places and don't have many other options for livelihoods. So we want to work with them, listen to them, try and understand their culture, um, the value of the mantas to them and see if we can help them come up with alternatives. A study by Manta Trust, along with fellow nonprofits Wild Aid and Shark Savers, estimates that manta ecotourism generates 15 million US dollars a year in Indonesia. In fact, a single living manta ray can generate over one million dollars in tourism revenue. That's far more than the paltry $40 a fisherman at the bottom of the illegal trade chain is likely to get for a dead one. So from when you first got here into now, how have you seen the population change? Do you feel that it is going in a more positive direction for the manta rays? There's definitely some huge positive changes that have happened since I've been here. Obviously, the new law, which is yes. the <laughs> cherry on top of the cake. It's the main thing, but just the people's awareness about mantas has changed a lot since, since I've uh, been here. And, I've noticed a lot more people understanding about mantas, realizing their value, realizing how vulnerable they are. And it's really great to see the Indonesian people taking pride in their manta ray populations. And that for me has been something that's really special. 
Along Bali's beaches, manta rays now mean money, with locals offering scuba diving and snorkel tours. Tourism may be a vital part of manta conservation, but this too needs to be managed to ensure that tourists stay respectful of the rays and their environment. And we are seeing now in certain sites around Indonesia where there's heavy tourism pressure, we are starting to see a little bit of habitat disturbance. Although there are those maybe some negative impacts from the tourism, we still believe that it's far better than fishing mantas. Being in the ocean with manta rays is something that anyone who's ever done it never forgets, and it's clear that they need to be conserved at all costs. Diving and snorkeling with the manta ray is the most amazing, magical experience. And I can't really describe it in words, it doesn't do it justice, but they're incredibly unique animals. They are a fish but they're really intelligent. They have the largest brain to body ratio of any known fish, which is really amazing. And with that brings curiosity and incredible social behavior. And quite often as a diver or a snorkeler, we're in the water with a manta, we find they approach us. Having one come up to you and look in your eye and swim right over your head is incredible. <laughs>